Will the return of Edwin Diaz bring back winning ways to the New York Mets? We'll break it down on today's show. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Errol Ryan Ficklestein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Ficklestein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers who join today will get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Last year, the New York Mets lost Edwin Diaz prior to the start of the season. And at the time, it felt like a crushing blow, but one that we still expected the Mets to rise above, right? All right, David Robertson's your closer. You have Adam Montavino and Brooks Raley, and you still have Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer and Kodai Senga in that rotation. And it's the same team that won 101 games the year before, but with all these additions. Come opening day last year, I thought the Mets were going to be a great team regardless of the Edwin Diaz loss. I remember recording a Locked On Now in the garage at Lone Depot Park with my dad in the car after the Mets beat the Marlins and saying it felt a lot like the year before the Mets were going to keep things rolling. It didn't happen that way. And now, as we're armed with hindsight, I go back to the night that Edwin Diaz tore his ACL, or what was it? Is it ACL, MCL? doesn't matter. Tore the ligament in his knee during the World Baseball Classic, jumping up and down, celebrating the victory. And in the pit of my stomach at the time, I thought, oh, that was two Mets. It's just two Mets. You all know what that means if you're a Mets fan. That should not have happened. Why did it happen? Oh, my God, what does that mean for the rest of the season? Despite the fact that the season hadn't even started yet. And as we look back, you cannot look at that one injury and say that's the end-all be-all for why the New York Mets had a terrible year. But it was the first bad omen that ended up evolving into what was just an awful season for the Mets. If they have Enwin Diaz, how do things change? Sure, you still would have lost Justin Verlander right before opening day. You still lost Jose Quintana. Your rotation still would have been bad. But that trickle-down effect, it is hard to really figure it out. Having David Robertson pitching as well as he did in the eighth inning instead of in the ninth and knocking every other person in that pen down a peg because Edwin was still in his closer's role, it's something we'll never know the real answer to. But I will try to give some sense of what impact Edwin Diaz has throughout the show today. So let's look at Pythagorean win-loss. This is essentially how many games a team should win based on how many runs they scored and how many they gave up across a full season. It's the simplest way to describe it. Now, last year, the Mets went 75 and 87. Their Pythagorean win-loss record was at 80 and 82. This is looking at the entire season. So you're also factoring in two months of the post-trade deadline Mets that were not anywhere near what they were supposed to be you know, opening day 2023. So it's not an exact science, but they did leave some wins on the table. The Mets went 25 and 28 in one run games. Now the year prior, they went 101 and 61 throughout the season. Their Pythagorean win loss was 99 and 63. So actually they were a little more fortunate than they should have been, but not much. It was pretty much spot on. They went 21 and 15 in one run games. So you go from 21 and 15, a 583 winning percentage in one run games when you had the best closer in baseball to a year later going 25 and 28 in one run games, a 472 winning percentage. Winning percentage dropped off by more than 100 points. Is that the reason why the Mets went from 101 wins to 75? No, but it's a very big one. Win probability added is a very 
you know, tough stat to really draw much from. On the surface, it sounds great. Edwin Diaz had a win probability added of four, about four wins in 2022. So he added four wins to the bottom line, sure. But if you remove Edwin Diaz from the 2022 Mets, are they a 97-win team? No. Absolutely not. Because it doesn't really account for a role. It doesn't account for the impact on the next guy down the line. It doesn't account for the fact that Adam Adovino had a great season as the eighth inning guy for a lockdown closer in Edwin Diaz. Is that just Adam Adovino had a great year? Or is that some type of trickle-down effect of having such an amazing reliever pitching in all of the toughest spots? You know, Buck Showalter going to Edwin Diaz in the eighth inning at times when he needed to to get that big out. To maybe bail Adam Adovino out in some instances. There was a lot that Edwin did that year to really put that bullpen on his back. I'm not saying that's why Adam Adovino was so good, but what I will say is he might have been worse last year because of the added pressure of having to fill in, having to try to save games at times because he moved up in the order. I guess technically he stayed the same, but being the eighth inning guy for David Robertson is a lot different than being the eighth inning guy for the best closer in all of baseball. Again, we will never know what the loss of Edwin Diaz meant to the New York Mets, but we do know they definitely would have been a heck of a lot better if they had him. And let's just say you win those extra two or three games in June and also in May because you had Edwin back there and he was able to save that game. He was able to go six outs and save a tough one, whatever it is. All of a sudden, the Mets are a different team last year at the trade deadline. So maybe they add. Maybe they, they do things differently. And who knows if that group could have found a rhythm in the second half. Buck Showalter has been doing some media rounds lately. I've been watching him. And he is very quick to point to the Edwin Diaz injury as something that killed the Mets. And he also said, I think it was on the Foul Territory podcast, uh, that you know, he believes that the Mets would have been able to get a run together in the second half. He'll always believe that. Now, that's manager speak. That's what he's going to say, of course. Um, obviously, he's going to believe in his guys. But I do wonder if you had a healthy Edwin Diaz and you were in the race a little bit more, what that team could have done the second half with Justin Verlander as the ace. Now, in the long run for this franchise, it was the worst and best thing that could have happened because the Mets were trying to thread this needle in a very tight window with Scherzer and Verlander. And then they flip those guys for, you know, controllable pieces who have a chance to be stars, you know, by adding a Luis and Helicuna, Drew Gilbert, Ryan Clifford, all these guys into your farm system with the emergence of a Jet Williams, not to mention flipping David Robertson for Marco Vargas and Ronald Hernandez, guys that, Right now, we're not really sure what they're going to be. They're still really early on in their careers, but could be great. Even flipping uh, Tommy Pham for, was it Jeremy Rodriguez, if I'm not mistaken? But it's a shortstop prospect that you know some love already. I mean, there was a lot of value the Mets got out of losing last year. So in the long run, they're probably better off for everything that happened. But it was a tough year to endure. And if Edwin was there, I, I just don't think the Mets would have been nearly as bad. And I find it hard to believe that they would not have been enough in the race at the deadline that the Mets wouldn't have been buyers instead of sellers. Again, in the long run, probably for the best, because I don't think that Edwin Diaz was enough for the Mets to make the World Series. And I don't even know if he was enough for them to make the playoffs by having him because so much went wrong last year. But they would have been in the hunt a lot more than they were. And now with him back this year, I do believe he can cover up for some of the warts of this team and not single-handedly make them a contender, but make other pieces fit so much better and, and help areas like a rotation that you don't entirely believe in, a bullpen that is improved certainly with some of the additions, but not necessarily elite when you're walking into opening day. If that Wendy is in place, maybe the Mets can be winners next year. I don't want to go through why I believe that and what that trickle-down effect will look like in just a minute. First, though, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Every night, there's always something in the NBA that you can bet on, whether it's a player to hit the over on their points scored or hit their over on three-pointers made, if it's the team to hit the under on the total points in the game, or you know you can combine multiple teams in a parlay. Not to mention, MLB season's around the corner. Want to look at futures? You can find the awards odds coming up here soon. A lot of great stuff over at FanDuel. And again, you place that $5 bet and you win, you're going to get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to shoot your shot. That's FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Edwin Diaz is completely healthy. He's throwing bullpens in Port St. Lucie. He is ready to go. And the Mets better keep that man in bubble wrap because he very well could be the difference in them making the playoffs or not this year. As we all recall, 2022, Edwin Diaz pitched to a 1.31 ERA. His strikeout per nine rate was over 17. He struck out over 50% of the batters he faced. 50.2% strikeout percentage. He was unbelievable. And now, after a year off, he's got a fresh arm, and he's ready to go. And I just think there's a chance that Edwin Diaz could really move the needle in a massive way for the New York Mets. Having Narcos playing again at City Field, as you know, the crowd mimics their trumpets and they all blare through the speakers, and that fear of all right, the Mets have a one-run lead. If you're the opposing team, you got to try to scratch one on Edwin Diaz, where he can throw 102 and give you that nasty slider. This is going to be a massive, massive needle mover for this team, and it's quite honestly the biggest addition they've made this offseason. Just getting him back. Who's going to add more value than Edwin Diaz? Do you think Luis Severino is? Sean Manaya? Adrian Hauser, Tyrone Taylor, Harrison Bader, Jake Diekman. I mean, th- there's just no one that can provide the value that a lockdown closer of Edwin Diaz's caliber. What he's going to do for your team, it's just a huge, huge bonus to have him back in the fold here. And, you know, it's not like he alone can change the fortune of the Mets season. A lot of things still have to break right. But as long as they can bridge the gap to him and give him leads, he's going to lock him down. And if he locks down those leads and the Mets are winning the one-run games instead of losing them, that's going to be the thing that really makes them a team that can go on a run and not necessarily win the World Series, but make a push to be a wild card team. Because nowadays, it's not hard to be a wild card team. You just have to be in the hunt. And then if you are and you make the right couple moves at the trade deadline and you have a good last two months of the season, big bang, boom, you're in the playoffs. And we've seen the third wild card team make it to the World Series from the National League. So anything is possible. To me, Edwin Diaz right now is in a lot of ways the best pitcher on the New York Mets. Now, Kodai Senga is still probably more important because he's just going to cover more innings. You know, I ranked the top players on the Mets in an episode probably about a month ago at this point. Um, And you you can go and find it. I ranked out a top 10 of all the best players that the Mets had. And I did have a debate on my hand between Kodai Senga and Edwin Diaz. And I went Kodai because, again, he's going to pitch at least twice, hopefully more than that, hopefully three times as many innings as Edwin Diaz will. But Kodai Senga is not pitching in the ninth inning, or if he is, it's going to be very rarely. Edwin Diaz will be deciding games. And if you're just looking at who's the best pitcher on this team, no one is as unhittable as Edwin Diaz. So I I really believe that this addition or re-addition, however you want to describe that, it's going to be worth like five games at least in my eyes. Um, And... That's just on his added value alone. That doesn't even consider 
how much better he makes Adam Adovino, Brooks Raley, Drew Smith, or the other guys that they added this offseason. We'll talk about a little bit more in the next segment. If Edwin Diaz is back to being himself, the Mets are going to be a much, much better team, particularly late in games. I think this is a team that is very much built on this idea of winning close games. What's been the number one priority this offseason? You can say adding pitching, but I think David Stearns would say run prevention. Hasn't been much about uh, you know run creation. I mean, who do they add to create runs this offseason? Harrison Bader? I don't think so. Tyrone Taylor? Nope. Joey Wendell? All these guys, defensive-minded players. And that's the idea. We might not be able to score 10 runs a night. I have to go out there and you know put up a, a 13 spot. But David starts thinking, guess what we're going to be able to do? We're going to be able to defend. And we're going to be able to pitch late in games. And that was, I think, the way that he built a lot of good teams that overperformed in Milwaukee. And now he's trying to recreate that. But the good thing is the Mets still have enough stars in place to be able to put some runs on the board. And with Harrison Bader and Brandon Nimmo and Tyrone Taylor running down fly balls in the outfield, trying to you know, prevent some extra runs from scoring, the hope would be that you have some pitchers in your starting rotation that might have a 3-6 ERA where their expected ERA is 4-4. And that group is able to overperform a little bit thanks to the defense. And if you get the right combination going to bridge that gap, because maybe those guys are only going five innings, but you can bridge it and, and get yourself to at least four outs left in the game with a one run lead. And then you can blare those trumpets and hope that we can come in and save the day. Add another one to that win column. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. I really do believe that this team is going to impress us and, and be um, better than what the prognosticators are going to expect leading into it. But a lot of that hinges for me on what Edwin Diaz is going to bring to this bullpen. The only question beyond that is who's going to bridge the gap to him. I want to talk about who I believe is going to end up in that eighth inning role in just a minute. First though, today's episode is brought to you by eBay motors. Passion drive and patience are what brings home the winning trophy it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers to roof racks to exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. With eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Well, we all know who's closing for the mess this year, but the question is, who is setting up Edwin Diaz? I think going into camp, the favorite to be the eighth inning guy is Adam Adovino. It's got to be, right? He's got the most experience. He held down that role in 2022 and did very well. And even with his struggles last year, his ERA was still in the low threes. So if he can get a couple of ticks back on the velo, if he can figure out that you know, sweeper, slider, cutter, whatever you want to call it, figure out his breaking pitch and land it for a strike more often, get that bite back to it, but not too much bite where it's just not competitive. All right. The Mets could be cooking with gas again with those two guys, but they also have Brooks Raley. So if you really look at it, what was the group that the Mets had back in 2022 and they won 101 games? Well, it was Edwin Diaz. It was Adam Adovino. Then who else was it? Seth Lugo, Trevor May. Really that year, the elite relievers on that team were just Diaz, Adam Adovino, or I guess the, the, the guys that you absolutely could trust. Now, Drew Smith had a good year in 2022, and last year it was far from that. He's in the mix again this year. We'll see what version you get. 
But in 2023, I think there was two relievers that you felt good about again. But it wasn't Adam Adovino this time. It was David Robertson and Brooks Raley. Well, now you're hoping that Brooks Raley can repeat that performance. Adam Adovino can get back to where he was in 2022. I mentioned Drew Smith. He is an option. Just one that I don't think a lot of fans are going to be thrilled about considering what he did last year and sort of just the thought that he's never quite you know, ascended to the point where he is a high leverage lever that you trust, even when he was at his best. You got Jake Diekman, who was brought in. Really good left-handed reliever. Had a great finish of the season with the Rays. So I don't know what you're going to get there. You have Jorge Lopez, the first major league relief pitcher the Mets added, or pitcher they added on a major league deal, I should say, this offseason. Guy that was an all-star in 2022. Got traded, did not pitch well, and then pitched even worse last season. Can he bounce back? Despite all those names, the one that jumps out to me is Shintaro Fujinami. It might not be opening day. It might not be in May, but at some point this season, I feel like Fujinami is going to be the second best reliever in that bullpen. Or at least that would be my hope because you know what he has? The second best stuff. He's got the velocity. He's got a pitch mix that could work, right? How is that splitter going to fare this year? There's a lot of questions with Fuji. But when you have two guys in your bullpen, that can throw over 100, and that's something the Mets just did not have at all last year. I think that changes things in a big, big way. Now, if I was managing this team, I don't know if I would pitch Fujinami to Diaz. I do think I'd probably put a buffer there. So when I say who's going to pitch the eighth inning, I still probably lean towards Adam Adovino. And nowadays, he's still, even if he gets a little bit of velo back, he's probably living more 94, 95. Anyway, even at his best. Um, And last year was more 93, 94. So the reason why I say Adam Adovino in that eighth thing, and if not him, I go Brooks Raley, is because I want, if I was the manager, I would want a a change of pace before you get to Edwin Diaz. I wouldn't want guys timing up 101 and then getting 101 again by going from Fuji to Diaz. But when it comes to sort of function as the second most important reliever, the guy that you call on to get the big hitters out. There's something about Fuji that just excites me. And it's probably just the triple digits on the radar gun, and that's what excited two teams last year, and it didn't really work out great for either of them. But I have seen some Orioles fans um, say, hey, you guys are going to love him. And I do believe that even though the numbers weren't there, He's a guy that you really can dream on a little bit, and he certainly has the potential of being a really great lockdown reliever. So I'm excited about that. I look at the collective for this Mets team and just thinking about this bullpen. Between Adovino, Rayleigh, Fujinami, Drew Smith, Jake Diekman, Jorge Lopez, and certainly not in that order, I look at that group, and there's six options there that could potentially be the high leverage levers. And that's not even including, of course, your closer. So can three of those six options have a good year? If they do, and you have Edwin Diaz firing all cylinders, that is the best bullpen the New York Mets have had in a long time. And that's not even getting to all the depth signings that were made. So, I look at this Mets bullpen and I do believe that this is a real strength going into this upcoming season. And we'll probably talk about that more in the coming weeks as we get to pitchers and catchers reporting and and, and going through all the spring training notes, because that is the one position battle, I guess, to follow, right? There's a lot of names in camp. I could try to win a job in that bullpen or in a potential six man rotation, depending on how injuries shake out and everything else. There's a lot of pitchers that we want to discuss. But having Edwin Diaz in place is really the piece that lets all of the other stuff fall in line. It's what allows you to maybe get around, again, that really great rotation. It's having maybe only a couple guys in that rotation with Senga and potentially Quintana even uh, who are going to go deep into games. And that's not even a given with either of those guys. They're just the two that I trust the most in that rotation. 
So knowing that guys are not necessarily going to be going deep into games, it's so important to have all these options in place. And if you didn't have Edwin Diaz and you needed Adam Adovino closing games and everybody else fell down a slot like we saw last year, you run into some troubles where that seventh inning is covered by a guy that you don't really want out there in a high leverage spot. And I think now the Mets are going to be able to find their way to always having a pitcher that they really want in high leverage on the mound. And as we go back to the first segment today, you look at that one run record in those games that were decided by the one run. You go from six games over with Edwin Diaz in 2022 to three games under. That is a complete inexact silent science to look at it by just saying, hey, they were Six games over 500 in one year, three games under the other year. Add those two numbers together, you get nine wins. But I will take that inexact science and say, hey, there were nine wins better last year. Might have just never had a playoff team at 84 wins. It's not that simple, but I really do believe that the trickle-down effect of having Edwin Diaz in place could actually be worth that many games. I really think so. And when you have a team that on paper profiles like a 500 team, Edwin Diaz could absolutely be the one piece that moves the needle enough that the Mets sneak their way into the playoffs. Or at least hang around enough that they're able to trade for the requisite pieces that they need at the deadline to get there. So I'm excited to watch him pitch again, and I'm sure all you Mets fans are as well. It's going to be electric. When he gets on the mound again at City Field. And I can't wait to see the ovation he gets when he does. Anyway, that's going to be all for today's edition of Locked On Mets. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. We're trying to get to 8,000 subs by opening day. So appreciate all of you who are hitting that subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked On Mets. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Now, for your second watch, Head over to Locked On Sports today on YouTube, the first ever 24-7 streaming channel covering everything in the world of sports. Of course, today they're going to be talking about the Super Bowl. So head on over there at Locked On Sports today, which is streaming 24-7 on YouTube.